Welcome to another adventure in engineering. In this video, I'm going to show you the entire process of a complete beginner going from a box 3D printer to a printed part of my own design, including some of the issues I had and how to fix them. I'll be using a Creality Ender 3 S1, which I chose for the direct extruder, which allows me a wide range of filaments. I'll be using FreeCAD, where I designed my part, but I'll only show you the finished part and how to export to make it work with a 3D printer. And then from there, I use Cura to make the 3D printer file and then print the part. Of course, you start by unboxing the printer, laying out all your parts on a workbench and verifying the printer parts list. All the necessary tools are provided with the printer. First, connect the print head. Next, attach the upright portion to the base with four bolts through the base. Make sure to verify the upright is true perpendicular after attaching. I used an L-square. One side of mine was not quite square, so I had to go back, loosen it, and reinstall it. Attach the display on the side with three long screws. The filament spool holder snaps into place on the top rail. The wiring harness is pretty simple, and each connector only fits in one socket near where it comes out of either the harness or the top assembly. At this point, you're ready to run the auto level process. This is going to verify the movement functionality in the sensors of the printer. You must manually set your Z offset after you run the uh, auto level. I made the mistake of not doing this the first time and my print failed to stick to the base plate because it was too far away. Make sure you remove any plastic from the nozzle before you start your Z offset adjusting. Um, you can use the paper provided uh, and adjust the Z axis down until it slightly drags on the paper. For each new print, you'll probably want to repeat the leveling and the Z offset setting especially if you've cleaned, removed the nozzle, or changed the filament. It's just good practice to do it every time. Make sure you have clearance at the back of the printer. With the tray moved all the way back, I found that four inches or about 100 millimeters was sufficient clearance uh, to, for the tray not to be impeded by the wiring harness sticking out the back. To help with print adhesion and removal, use a glue stick to coat the entire area that you're going to print. The printer kept shutting down just as it was starting the bed preheat. I found that the input voltage was set to 230 volts instead of 115 from the factory, so I switched it over to 115 and the printer started working properly after that. I designed my part using FreeCAD, so here I opened the FreeCAD project, select the body, and exported the file as an STL that Cura can use. I chose Cura over the Creality Slicer because, well, the Creality Slicer is Cura, but an older version tweaked for uh, Creality printers. The Ender 3 S1 was listed in the Cura 
available printers and it seemed to have reasonable defaults so I have no reason to believe that it's any different from the Creality Slicer. In Cura you'll select your printer on the first run and then you can add more printers later if needed and select the proper one for each print. You can easily check the printer settings at any time. Load your desired STL file and set the material type and the quality settings. Now click the slice button and the magic happens in Cura. You can go and look at the layers by clicking the preview button and using the slider on the right side to cycle through each layer. When you're happy with the slicing, save the G-code file to the SD card and take it to your printer, and now the fun starts. Well, not quite. Did you remember to set your Z-offset? Because I didn't on the first try. So, the filament came out way too high and didn't stick to the surface. Redo! It is wise to watch at least the first layer of your print to make sure it's adhering to the bed properly and the extrusion looks clean. When the print finished, I waited until it was cool to the touch. I removed the flex plate and gently bent it to remove the part. It came off pretty easily and cleanly. This should be eight millimeters. So the plastic, uh, in melting the plastic, it bleeds in, inward a little bit. It expands inward to the holes a little bit. This is supposed to be 36, 35.7, and the taper goes, it's supposed to go to 40. And that's more like 39.3 or something. but not bad. And I can tweak the settings a little bit and maybe make the holes a little bit bigger to make the, make the print come out better. To prep for your next print, I recommend cleaning the base plate with rubbing alcohol and then clearing the nozzle and extruder. For the nozzle cleaning, I heated the extruder to 200 C and pushed a little bit of filament through, then let it cool to 90 C and release the gears, pull the filament out of the top. At this temperature, the filament should come out as one piece all the way down to the nozzle opening. Um, <clears throat> then I remove the nozzle to verify by looking through it at a light. And when I could see through it, I knew that I had cleaned it out properly. Put the nozzle back on and you're ready to go with a different print and a different filament next time. 
From box opening to print, this entire process took me about two and a half hours of actual labor time, but I did have some issues shown in this video that slowed my process down a little bit. So hopefully after watching this video, you can be a little faster than that. I hope you found this video useful. I've added a few links in the description below to help you with your first 3D print. Good luck.